Welcome. So everyone, um, we're going to talk about The Yellow House today, a memoir by Sarah Broom. And um, as I said, you didn't have to read this book to talk about it. Um, so I'm going to start today with sharing a video of her. And it's on Good Morning America. And she's uh, reading from her book and talking about her book, but she also shows pictures. Huh. Oh, I thought we would um, start with that and then go from there. So I'm going to um, get the video ready to go. And um, we'll watch that. It's about five minutes. And then we'll start our discussion. Hey, there were absolutely no questions online. So I had to come up with my own questions. I love fine too, and I couldn't find you, Janine. No, no questions. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> well, it was only it was only published in 2019. Yeah, so now so, they can use our questions. I expected right. the publisher to have some. Pardon me? I expected the publisher to have some questions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. All right, let me uh, share my screen here. And um Hmm. Okay, it, uh, hold on. Is that a Linda here? <laughs> Hi, Linda. Hi, Nancy. <gasps> Something's happening. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 oh. you see it? Uh, yeah, yeah, good morning, America. Here it comes. Yeah. <clears throat> Author Sarah M. Broom's new memoir, The Yellow House, takes us on a journey, and a remarkable journey, through New Orleans, especially New Orleans East, exploring her beloved childhood home that was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. Her tale is one of love, loss, and resilience. She's going to join us in a moment. Let's take a look at her story first. The yellow house was witness to our lives. When it fell down, something in me burst. After Sarah Broom's childhood home was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina, she was inspired to rebuild in a different way. How to resurrect a house with words. This is Sarah's mission in her new book, The Yellow House. Sarah grew up in New Orleans East, just seven miles outside of the French Quarter. New Orleans East is not a place you find on most of the tourist maps. Today, Sarah is reclaiming the narrative of her city and her home. Houses provide a frame that bears us up. Without that physical structure, we are the house that bears itself up. I was now the house. Such profound words. Please welcome Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. Full disclosure, we were having dinner in her home in Harlem several months ago. She said, you know, I've written this little book. I'm like, oh, well, send me an advanced copy. I read it. I'm like, oh, I'm amazed by it. And then boom, but it took eight years. Eight years. Oh, yes. It was a labor of love, wasn't it? It really was. And it was important for me to get it right, Robin. Mm. Uh, this was a place my mother bought when she was 19 years old in 1961 with every cent she had. And so I had to do justice to the world that she built. You know, I'm the baby of 12 children. 12, <laughs> I know, right? So she raised 12 human beings inside of this house. And when I was growing up, there were no stories of New Orleans East. Even when I was recording this book, there weren't reference books. I wrote the book that I needed and that I wanted my nieces and nephews to read. You have like 50 of them, don't you? I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 50 of them. <laughs> and hopefully that they'll add to the story. That's right. It inspires families. And I'm inspired now to learn more about my family history. And, you know, when you hear, yes, there's no place like home, and it's the details. You know, a house is a house, but what makes it a home to you? You know, for me, it's beauty. That's the thing my mother taught me, is that you figure out what's beautiful for you, and then you go out and you collect beauty. Hmm. That no matter what you have, we can all train our eyes upon a beautiful thing and get immense joy from it. And so for me and where I live, I'm always collecting things. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if they don't match or they don't go. I, I didn't want to say that, but when I was in your home, I was like, that doesn't go with that. No, it, it was so warm and inviting. It was you. 
it's huge. You know, uh, okay, it's August. And those of us who are from down south, and we have some folks in Mississippi and New Orleans, 14 years ago, Hurricane Katrina, and your home was destroyed by that. And then later, it was completely, completely demolished by the city. You recently were able to go back. When you went back and just saw that lot, what was in your mind and your heart? You know, Robin, it was a profound feeling. When I went back, the only thing that I could recognize was a single cedar tree that my father had planted before I was born. The rest mm. of the lot was just green grass growing. And I thought to myself, it was the first moment I understood why I wrote this book, because I thought, oh, this book tells the history of a place no one except me or my siblings can see. And so for the kid who still lives on the street where I grew up, she will have a record, a history of what came before. Yeah. But what is your message? What does you want, want people reading this? What do you want them to have? The message to come away with? Sure. I think for me, it's really about what, what it means to love a place. That if we truly love a place and are tethered to a place, then it's our job to get to know that place, to think of that place, and to look beyond the official map to not only go to the places that are in the narrative, but to go beyond those places. Well, well thank you for taking us on. Thank you. Uh, uh, turned her off. Well, they weren't really in this home. They weren't really, well, not, I wouldn't say not. All right, back to Zoom here. Okay, uh, I don't know if anyone had seen that clip. Um, so sorry if you had, but I, when I discovered it last night, um, I thought it was a good summary of the book and, uh, started talking about What's going it. on here? Shoots. Everyone, everyone okay there, Marsha? Yes, all of a sudden my screen went goofy and so I back. <laughs> was the video okay, clear and everything for everyone? Yeah, yeah, if you're not down, yeah. good. Please yeah. mute yourself just because um, I'm hearing a little background feedback. So just if you're not going to talk, maybe mute yourself or don't fidget. <laughs> <laughs> so um, why don't we begin talking about um, if anyone's been to New Orleans before um, we start? Uh, I was uh, pre water New Orleans and haven't been back. Um, and anyone um, else been to New Orleans? Yes. Mm -hmm. Pre or post? Pre. Pre. Who was post? I was. You were? Yeah. Post Katrina, do you mean? Post Katrina, yeah. Post yeah. Water. Yeah, I was there in uh, 2012, so. Okay, all right. Any, like, was it, did you see anything of uh, Katrina? Like any, uh, or? Well, what? they had tours that you could take to see the devastation of Katrina. I felt that was being yeah. exploitive. I didn't want to go and gawk at somebody's poor house that had been torn down. So we chose not to do that. I just felt like these people have gone through enough and now they're taking bus tours so you can see their houses torn down. I, I felt, I just felt such empathy for these people. I couldn't Im impede on their life. Yeah. Doesn't she mention it right in the beginning of the book? I never oh. went back to that, but doesn't she have a little blurb in the front about just that, those tours and how yeah. Um, yeah, she demeaning does. that was? But yeah. she never went back to that. Yeah, she does mention uh, how could people look. Yeah. I. <laughs> Somewhere in the book, she does mention that. Yes, yeah. way in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Almost yeah. before the book actually starts, I think. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So... Um, I went on that tour, but it did? wasn't that bad. Oh, okay. This is Jerry. Well, I was on that tour when we were in New Orleans, but it wasn't that terrible. They just took you where the devastation was, and not, there was nothing to see except the land. Was well, there still trash that. all around, or, or had they no, cleaned it up? No. It was cleaned up. It was yeah. cleaned up. 
Well, I, since it's a tourism thing, they probably wouldn't take you to areas that they wouldn't want you to see. Um, well, that's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it didn't, it was just kind of putting the location where it was, yeah. that's all. Yeah. Was around the city. Well, the mailbox. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I, I know I've shared this with a couple of people that I had a really hard time getting into the book in the beginning. And, totally. And totally. Uh, right. <laughs> there were way too many people, and I, I, I'm, I was confused. I, 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 got on, I got on the computer, and I was looking for a family tree that would be written out so I can, like, study it. And yeah. I couldn't find <laughs> anything. Um, write everything down as to who was married to who and whose kids were who. I read it twice because I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know, towards the end of the story, it was like, really, you kind of then knew who was important. Like Carl, very, yeah. very important. Michael, and you knew what they did. And, and um, but some of them, you know, they hardly touched on like Valeria, is that, um, so who was she? Where where'd she come from? I'm like, what number was she? <laughs> she, was one of the, she was one of the two sisters that weren't her I I her mother's natural children. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, oh, there were really? two sisters who were the second father's daughters who came and right. referred to the mother as Miss Ivory. That's okay. This was um, my first experience using Hulu, or not Hulu. Hoopla. And one of the things that I found frustrating was that with a book, you go back really quickly. Mm -hmm. and with Hoopla, I don't know. Maybe some people can, but I didn't. No. So how many people in the family that? together? Frustrating. Yeah, it's really with this book. It was. I was using an old Kindle and um, yeah. I also found the billing of this book as a disaster. It was going to be about Katrina. I kept thinking, when are we going to get to Katrina? Yeah. But I'm, not that, but there were observations about the family that were very interesting and they definitely were a colorful, oh. interesting family. But it was like, when is she going to talk about Katrina? It was like, you had to get through three of the book before she ever talked about it. Sure. She's not even born until like a hundred pages in. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I thought like it was just the opposite of educated where the family was unusual and educated, but this was more of a typical family in uh -huh. New Orleans. And so yeah. they were kind of bookends of each other. Yeah. I, I thought the last Part of the book was the hardest to read. I was like, when are we going to sum this all up? Yeah, yeah I agree with that. I agree really, with that. Too. I really I, liked how the book kind of um, like showed you the development of New Orleans and like how that came to be. I felt like that was really fascinating history I, that I wasn't super, I mean, I knew it was like built on swampland and it's sinking, but I thought that using her family to like, you know, create a chronological timeline of the development of New Orleans was super interesting. What I, found, what I found interesting was she talks about how her mother liked beauty and all this, and they're living in this house that is literally falling down. Should have been <laughs> condemned. Um, they had, they just had holes everywhere. And I'm just, I just, how, I just couldn't figure out how they, Manage, and they wouldn't let anybody in this house because once they walked out, they looked, you know, like normal people. But I can't imagine living in that house. I mean, it was had rats, it had holes. They just built something and then threw people in there, and walls weren't done, doors. It, it, I just can't imagine what that house was like. Well, that, that's interesting, Marcia, because I somewhat agree with you. But in the in the clip that we just shot. We just saw in Good Morning America, the pictures, again, I was reading it on Hoopla, so any pictures were like not very well done. Right. The pictures that were just shown, remember the mother sitting on a settee type situation that's gold. She's got flowers in front of her. 
The mother was considered really beautiful by a lot of people. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I don't mean to sound really cliche-ish, but the mother liked nice things. Although her house was destroying around her, I think the mother lived in kind of a fantasy world. But was that necessary? The pictures were taken because she had relatives that had nice homes. So some of those pictures might not have been taken at the yellow house. Well, and also I feel like- With bad you know, situations and all sorts of different ways. Well, and I think also that, you know, she kind of alludes to the fact that like, she would rather have had that house, even though it was like, not a very nice house, than nothing at all. So I think that's also something that I took to heart, you know? Right, and another thing is given the fact that it's, that she's a black woman and she owns a house. At 19. That, that, <laughs> is, that in itself is pretty incredible. Yeah. And, and it's and my 19. heritage is a strong uh, magnet. Pardon? Family heritage is a strong magnet. Yeah. And to keep her and her family in that in that house. Yeah. And I'm not Cheryl Fee, by the way. I forgot to switch accounts. I'm Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. <laughs> Here, I'll change your I'll change your name on there, so we <laughs> <laughs> that picture that was shown at the end of the Good America clip of the house mm -hmm. was not anything like I have no. a picture of that house in my mind. Well, I kept thinking it was a shotgun, and um, but then they put an addition on top, you know, because the boys... Yeah, because they lived on top. Yeah, the boys were on top, so... And that the dad just built stuff. I mean, that's... Sort of. <laughs> half built <laughs> i think what was interesting though is they wouldn't bring anybody into the house i mean they didn't have any friends nobody came into the house I they mean, had just, friends they just didn't let people in the house yeah yeah i mean they the mother made sure they always looked really good yeah she must have been an amazing well she is an amazing teacher uh, the boys had suits, the girls all were dressed perfectly, and um, so, yeah, it was a disconnect between them. They had pride, but they managed the things, only the things that they could manage. Yeah, yeah. It never sounded like they were hungry. Yeah. No, that was the interesting part. They, they, um, they were all well-educated. Um, yeah, they, I all had, that. they all had jobs. Yeah. And the mother had, again, put yourself back into the time period. The mother had a good job for a woman in that time period. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I well, just couldn't imagine. And then that house was always, it was, it might be falling down, but she made sure it was clean. Um, so she was always cleaning her house, um, which. <laughs> Um, she had, so she had some sort of pride in it, but, um, you know, she wanted to have a clean, a healthy place for her kids, but no one else come in. Well, and it was, it was kind of neat how a couple of times in the book, they mentioned how she had such a great green thumb and she was so talented with fl flowers and gardens. Mm hmm Yeah. So what socialize, they often did it outside. Yes, yes. And they blocked all those clubs. So oh. well, I think it's interesting. It gave us an insight as to not only the time period, but the culture in which they grew up in that neighborhood, which, you know, is different than the culture that many of us grew up in. And I, I think this was a, a hard family, yeah, that had a lot of barriers, um, didn't have a lot of opportunities, but they made the most of what they had. So it, it just, I, I found the book, like everybody has said, or indicated that um, it was pretty hard to follow. <laughs> and um, I found myself yeah, kind of frustrated with it. And, and there were all these uh, dangling parts that didn't seem to develop into a cohesive story. Um, it was kind of fragmented. So, but I, I thought the insight I got from it was good. You know, people's lives can be very fragmented and she kind of just went. Right. 
Right. Um, I think she needed a really good editor. Well, I think I, if, <laughs> that would have, you know, brought the story together more and made it um, a little bit more cohesive and uh, enriching to read. Well, uh, did anybody uh, try that's, that's, that's an interesting purpose? point. I actually oh, listened to it almost straight through just because I was doing a painting project and I feel like listening to it and like like straight through maybe was a little bit better of an experience because I feel like if you picked it up and set it down, you know, and yeah. set it down, it might have, it, I could definitely see how it would be fragmented and hard yeah. to follow, but. Has anybody read any of her other writings like in Owen? Um, the New Yorker, or I mean, she's written for magazines. Has anybody read anything else that she's written? Is it oh, always? No, no. <clears throat> I mean, she's not even 40. Why yet. did she go to Burundi? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, somebody I mean, told her to. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, we are, when we have a job, I mean, I, I, we don't have, we haven't had that many jobs. I mean, me, I just have had a few jobs. I don't know how many jobs she had. By the time the story finally mm -hmm. ended, she mm -hmm. would go through jobs. She worked for the mayor, and then um, she she went to Burundi. She worked Burundi. for Burundi. She worked for nonprofits. She went to graduate school. She went to college. I mean, this woman wasn't even. I mean, what was she thirty by the time she wrote this? Um. Yeah, well, it took her eight years. She'd always, she and started when she three. was in graduate school and just as she was doing all her other jobs was always writing it. But this was the National Book Award nonfiction winner. And yeah. I don't understand that. I, no. don't I, was, I was surprised, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to compare this to educated, there is Which, no comparison. Right. It's, it's just, yeah. you know, and that was, I mean, if I couldn't put that book down. I know. This book I kept putting down and yeah. I, you know, just had forced myself to pick it up. Or like, yeah. the, yes, I have a question for you. When you listen to it, excuse me, Marcia. When right. you listen to it, when you're reading it, in, there's italic printing and it's in the dialogue and the way the people, in the way they would have been speaking when it was read, was their dialogue speaking? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was the same um, person throughout, but there was dialogue and there was definitely like change of inflection and- a but when there was, there was what, what I'm trying to get at is, there was New Orleans cadence, there was yep. New Orleans, there was, okay. Yeah, it was, I felt the, who, the reader really did a good job of depicting other characters. Well, that, that in itself, I think, might have made it easier to deal with. Yeah, I could see that for sure. So she divided to four parts called I'm involved with the great, like, great books. Go on. Go ahead, Jenny. Hi. Um, she divided it into four parts called movements. And uh, when you think of movements, I think of music. Mm -hmm. And I right. think um, instead of she didn't say parts or sections it was for movements Did anyone else notice that yes. well i i didn't uh -huh. i noticed it was movements but i didn't catch the <laughs> yeah why why um movements was anybody else surprised that she worked for the mayor no oh I mean, oh, I what, you were surprised in what way, I guess. Well, because he was, I mean, the whole government of New Orleans is so, um, a, well, I shouldn't say against, but they don't help the black population. And so the fact that she was helping him write his speeches and smooth over what he was saying, I just, I just found that incongruous. Yeah, I mean. No, it didn't shock me. I mean, she gotten back from Burundi, which I don't understand why she would have gone there. Yeah, that was really goofy. Like well, that's just... it was more than goofy to me. It was like really risk taking. Yeah. For and what it's was the so purpose? depressing for her. I mean, yes. it was, you know, she was totally depressed being in that situation. Well, I don't exactly think she's totally, I was really surprised at what an upbeat person she was on the Good Morning America th um, clip because she's not exactly, she's not in a good position in that family. 
I mean, you know, her mother's really hard on her. Her, all of her other siblings went to the public schools. She acts up once she gets sent to the strict private school. You know, she skips over totally about her college experience and her graduate school experience. And then she's in Burundi. And I know I keep talking about it, but it's like that really shocked me. And the fact that I agree with you, I'm sorry, we only know you as iPhone. I agree with you, iPhone. That, um, oh, that is Joan. <laughs> okay, I'm going to change your name, Joan. So I agree with you that it's odd that she goes to work for the mayor. I think it's very odd. And I was shocked that she was such an upbeat person. Yeah, but she worked for Oprah. I mean, when she, so that yeah. would be a good, anybody would want anyone who was probably on Oprah's staff. I mean, so. One of the people she profusely thanks in the afterward is Gail King. Gail King, right. So what did she do for Oprah? I mean, it's like, I just, I don't know. I find her a very fascinatingly, I, I, I don't know. I just am very confused by her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm involved with the uh, Great Lakes Great Books Book Club too. And something that uh, I think Trissa and Janine mentioned and others, one of the first things we always talk about a book is the structure. How, how easy was it to read? Ugh. And finding more and more failings of books to explain an order, a relationship. Uh, I'm reading uh, the, the history of Jean Nicolet as our, uh, our May book. And I mean, there's, there's names of people. I mean, it's just littered with names and names in French dialect frequently that are unfamiliar. And they're in towns in Quebec and Ontario and in France that have got there's no way to keep them together in my old brain. And we find that that's a problem for many of us is just the organization of the book. And, and, and it's our belief in some places that their editors just failed them miserably. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I feel like lately I've been reading a lot of books that are kind of jumping around, you know, past, present, past, present. And you just really, I mean, it's definitely an exercise. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is Willow, by the way, in case you're wondering who this little person is. This is Willow. She's joining us today. <laughs> um, back to the movement thing, as you were saying, structure. And um, did I, I, someone came to my door, but um, for the movement, uh, it, it was it's a musical thing, but it also um, is about her family moving and being displaced and movement. So I think what she, in her mind, her organization of the book and how she um, labeled the chapters um, was interesting. And I think, um, but I didn't understand that movement thing, you know, until the end. And I said, well, what was that all about? And, um, but yeah, so that was a bit interesting. So she has a home now in New Orleans. She bought a, um, uh, a free person uh, of colors home, a, a shotgun. And when you have a chance, uh, it's on apartment therapy, but I also put the link on. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and um, her style. Um, she is um, probably up there with the gal from Educated in Intelligence, um, just in confidence overly confident that she can go from job to job to job. I mean, I would be like, oh, I'll never find another job like that. Or, uh, but she can go from being, having the best job at Oprah to, um, you know, all over the place. But um, yeah, she's, I think she is super intelligent, uh, gifted in many ways. It'd be interesting to find out how she got the job with Oprah, how she got all these jobs. I mean, and what she did for those jobs, because yeah. you're right. She had all these different, she just kind of like, oh, I'm going to move here and do this. I'm going to move here and do that. I mean, amazing. Again, going back to something I said earlier, I'm really shocked. She goes to so much detail about their childhood, so much detail, but yet, we barely know where she went to college. We barely know that she left. She talks about how her 
how her siblings move out and we know where her siblings go and what her siblings do for a living, but we know nothing about, she literally goes from her childhood to working for Oprah in terms of what she tells us about herself. And I would think that college must have been and graduate school must have been an incredible period for her because she would have been away from her, um, from her extended family and always you know, viewed as a growth period. But she doesn't talk about that. And that has to be, I would think, where she gains this confidence, where she knows she's intelligent, and where she can sprout her wings to start doing whatever she wants. And she just doesn't tell us anything about that. Yet there is detail about, I mean, they all wore fluffy socks. I mean, she talked about that all the time. Well, I think that's interesting about memoirs in themselves is each memoir isn't necessarily a documentation of the actual event. It's the memories of that individual person and what they remember. So her being the youngest, she saw everyone as older and not necessarily what your tr the truth was from anyone who looked at it from the outside. So I always find memoirs interesting because you're seeing how that person is internalizing their experiences. Yeah, because it's, it's not a biography. It's not mm -hmm. going to follow her life. It's going to be just- So, I mean, Morgan, I appreciate what you said, but does that mean the college, she has no memories of it? I mean, I understand- no. She didn't, she didn't see it as, a, as an important fact. I mean, she was trying to tell the story of the house and the okay. experience. Right. Right. Okay. But she was a Burundi and working for the mayor is important. Well, maybe that was to give um, kind of credence to herself being a knowledgeable person and worthy of having awesome. those jobs. And then okay. speaking to the jobs, I mean, being the 12th, child i got to imagine she had some tenacity i mean to even be noticed in that big of a household and you know i got to imagine you had to you had to work <laughs> well and also she she was, age, she was the age of her own nieces and nephews and yeah. there, wasn't there like about a five-year drop between her and wasn't karen the next one up her sister yeah. Lynette. Was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> you've got the notes, Marcia. Who was the next one up? Oh, <laughs> Gosh. Who? <laughs> well, plus they all have different names. You know, you have two names for everybody. Monique so. thing. I don't know. This Monique thing kind of went, whoa, where did Monique come? <laughs> yeah, Karen was the next one up. It was Troy, Byron, Tro Troy, Byron, Keith, Karen, then her. Now, what well, happened to Lynette? Was Lynette Karen? No. The makeup artist. Well, and yeah, I guess her name was also, wasn't um, Sarah's name also Monique? Monique. Yeah, yes. Monique. So that could be. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. Everybody had two names. Why with 12 people you want two names? I don't know, but everybody. <laughs> You would think you'd have enough problems thinking of one name for this person, let alone two, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. This was, this was one thing that went through my mind when I finally started to figure out the family and the relationships and why, like, aunts were miss and, you know, they were, and aunties and grandmothers were really important and people weren't really married and people were on second husbands. I, I don't know if this is right, but in my mind, it was, at least to me, it explains slave culture. Because as, it's, as we've been told, you were, you were owned by somebody else. And if they decided, and you had children, you were a, you were a ma man and woman who had children, and they decided that the man was, they could sell the man for money or they could sell your oldest son off for money, they did. But that didn't mean, and then you were left without that in your family and <coughs> family member, and you attached yourself to other people that became your family. And it, that for me, there were, there were several things that I thought explained slave culture and about the house. 
the house might have looked like crap on the outside, but you kept it clean on the inside because, because it was all you had. And it was the only place you could be. And there's a there was a play called Crowns, which was about in Chicago, written by Regina Taylor about maybe 10 years ago. And it was about how black women get really dressed up to go to hats. And they wear hats called crowns. And these are really and this was the only time that they did this. And so the fact that those kids always had really nice clothes, it was things that they could control. The mother could control the way her kids looked by the clothes. She could control the cleanliness of the house. And her husband always failed in getting projects finished. So she couldn't control that. I mean, there were just things that- And then he died too. My, in yeah. my knowledge of slave culture, which is limited, it just seemed to me that all of these things came deep, came straight from there. So was any, anyone who really liked it besides Jess? I know Jess really liked the book. Um, anyone say, oh, this is so good, I'm gonna recommend it to someone? No, no. no. I, I, maybe, no. maybe it's because I listened to it and maybe I'll recommend yeah. that somebody listen to it. But yeah, I really yeah. like it. I was wondering it. about that, Jess. It'd be interesting to take books that you'd listen or that you'd read for this club or any other club before, and then also listen to the audible or the, the sound version of it and try to mentally compare the two. Or the next book, do it audible and then read it afterwards. So it would be an interesting comparison. I you, wouldn't you do say hear, that I liked this hear, book, but I would say- Voice inflection is such a it. huge thing. And For that's sure. the only way you can that. You can yeah. it mentally as you read. If you I, thought it was, I thought it was an interesting book to read. Um, it just got a little frustrating that it took forever to get done. But I just thought it was interesting from the whole standpoint of, you know, it's a whole different culture than, than you know, I've grown up in, although I did have a rather isolated childhood because I grew up on a dairy farm and we went nowhere for a week, um, except to church kind of thing. But um, but I just thought it was interesting from, from the standpoint it was a different culture than, you know, we just aren't part of. <laughs> It's funny, you, uh, Nancy, thought of Educated right away. I saw, thought of the book Evicted. I was comparing it to- Oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Going, oh, this is, you know, um, the importance of having your right. own place. And yeah. Um, huh. yeah, yeah. So that's the book that came into mind right away. I also thought of The Glass Castle. I did I, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, The Glass yeah. Castle. Uh -huh. And it, we're going to read the Dutch house later. I've read the Dutch house. And once again, it's based on that totally different house. I mean, totally different, but it's interesting how the house is taking prominence in all of these books. It's kind of interesting. Uh -huh. right. All of those things and compare how the author used that. I don't think the house took prominence. That was one thing that I had problems with. The, the quip that she, the, the, the first thing that she read when she was reading on Good Morning America, I remember reading that in the beginning and thinking, oh, and I get it that the house was what held the family together, but she talked about her family and to call, I don't know, the title just bothers me. The yellow, I mean, yeah, the house was important. I know that, but I think it was, imp I, don't, I can't say that I liked this book, I can't say that I'd say to somebody, read it, but I think you should, because I think that I agree with things that have been said that it was, it's a culture that I personally am unaware of and unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. right. I think it was good, but I also agree that it was difficult to read. Because, and not it's because... To say that a book is interesting, but it's not something you'd recommend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. But it was difficult to read, not because of the subject matter, because of the way it was written. The structure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I don't understand why it won the award it won. We don't know what it was up against either. Yeah. That's true, but yeah. That's so a scary thing. The Dutch house, um, if anyone, um, when, you, when you read it, you might want to listen to that book. Yeah, because that's read by Tom Hanks, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. As long as we're talking about Dutch House and stuff, can, Janine, will you, will you
Will you go through the order of what, um, what's the next book? The next book is The Lost Girls of Paris. Okay, and then is June 25th the stationery shop? Yes. Okay, what's, what's July 20th? Is that the Lager Queen? Yes. Okay, thank you. And the last one is the Dutch House. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting, I love listening. Um, I listened to the Dutch House straight for two days. It was when I was in bed. <laughs> And I, I kept thinking, oh, Tom, he had the same problems I did. <laughs> <laughs> you bonded. <laughs> we bonded. I feel like I'm going to have to write him a letter now. Like, he brought me through my illness. <laughs> do, do it. I just, do it. I will probably send you a great letter. Do it. I just read part of his un Uncommon Type, and I found that a very shallow book. Oh, yeah. He has but his obsession with typewriters. Yeah, I yeah. read that too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, let's see if I have any other questions for you about the Yellow House. Um, okay, I, I, I haven't said anything because I, it's, I didn't actually read the book. So. Oh, yeah. It's not, you don't yeah, need to. But, um, yeah. yeah, I read a review of it just before I logged in here. But, um, it's interesting that you say, usually, especially if a book is named The Yellow House, has the name of the house in the title, you expect that to almost be like one of the characters in the story. And I've actually listened to Tom Hanks read The Dutch House, so I'll be looking yeah. forward to doing that again. But in that particular case, that house is truly a character in the book. Uh -huh. um, right. But so The Yellow House, you didn't feel like, how did she name it the Yellow House? Do you suppose? I think she thought of it as a part one of her kids. I think she compared yeah. it like I have. She at one point, kids. she at one point says that her mother has twelve children. Actually, she has thirteen, and the and the hardest to control is the house. Yeah, yeah. Her words, but that's I think her sentiment. And the house is a character, in a sense, Ginny, but it's not overt. At least for me, it wasn't overt. I wanted it to be, in listening to everything that everyone said, I understand this book much better than I did when I read it. So thank you all very much for helping me understand the wisdom of this book. I think you almost have to, you have to almost listen to her talk about it to really like it. <laughs> <laughs> and and see what kind of person she was. I think she's fascinating, um, and I'd like to see some other books come from this. Uh, I think she's now going to write. Uh, this is her first. She spent the that year finishing it up in New Orleans, and I think now she'll start writing, hopefully. So. Does she still live in New Orleans? Well, she goes between New Orleans and Harlem. You can come through. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when you win a National Book Award. <laughs> <laughs> but she always seemed to have money. I mean. Yeah, she always does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she worked for Oprah. She worked for the mayor. She went to, she, whoever she worked for in Brunei eventually paid her. Yeah. So well, I think that, I mean, she, the whole book has her writing and journaling, and I think she's just a really talented writer. And so she got, you know, opened a lot of doors for her. Well, we don't know what her connections were in graduate school. That may be uh -huh. where she got all the networking. The right. family seemed to have money because remember the brother in California sends five tickets, yeah. five airline tickets. And one of them isn't even for, it's for an extended family member it's for Herman. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and, and, I mean, and didn't, didn't Herman, Herman did? was the friend. Alvin yeah. was her. They were kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. Herman well, was the kid that kicked one of her sister's teeth out. Well, yeah. and somebody worked for NASA. I mean, it had a really like steady job. He was a yeah, but they, NASA. At NASA her, he was like a janitor. I mean, he wasn't. It wasn't like he was a scientist. He but was he a, had a. But he had a steady job. Right. Yeah. His father did. His father, yeah. and then he did. Both and of then them. One of the they sons both took over the ah. job. And you know, sh the mother m might have gotten some money when um, her first husband passed away. 
house the house. That's how she bought the house. From the military. That's how she bought the house. Yeah. Right. And, but maybe she continually got you know checks from the military. Well, she worked um, too. Ivory yeah. worked. Yeah. Yeah. She was a nurse's. Um, and uh, she set an example for her children because she went back to school. Right. Um. The uh, healthcare worker that she would eventually become. They just probably didn't, you know, they didn't want to hire contractors to work on the house. And so, so well, I think the dad yeah. just thought, oh, I can do it. And he didn't. I've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I remember the time when I, I, I know, I think it was at uh, West High School in Wauwatosa when the, the kids came from Katrina. You know, people were, those people were going everywhere. And does anyone remember that? Like, oh, oh yeah, they yeah, the stayed at State Fair Park, didn't they? Yeah, they and they at State Fair Park. Yeah, so there was, um, and it, it kind of brought that back. I'd forgotten about that whole period. Um, that one, that when 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 the family scattered and they're talking about finding each other, mm -hmm. that was, for me, that was really very realistic. How frightening that must have been. Yeah. For, when Carl and Michael can't find people and they keep going to the same places over and over again to try and find people and to think that I mean it just sounded it sounds pretty horrible it, it, well, grandma was lost for a very long time did oh, they ever I find grandma awful about the grandma yeah yeah they found yeah. grandma okay. yeah and then she dies right away right, right. they find her. right yeah right. I mean, but we've forgotten well, all that. I mean, I had kind of forgotten that whole period of Katrina. Well, I, I remember that the Humane Societies were rescuing a lot of um, animals. Yeah. Uh, a lot of dogs came to the greater Milwaukee area um, that had lived through that. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, then when they talked about swimming through that, oh. all the uh, stuff uh, in the water, uh, I mean, uh, aye, aye, aye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I like it the way they described. It was like a perfect storm, too, because the way that the canal and the lake and, you know, everything had been dug in the wrong way, according to, you know, they thought it was going to be good and it wasn't. And it just became a nightmare. It was like the perfect storm for this Katrina and this flooding and everything. Whereas in other parts of uh, it, of New Orleans, it was fine. You know, no, nothing was touched in the French Quarter because it was on higher ground. And, you know, it's, that was, that was interesting too, how it, how the Corps of Engineering had mismanaged this land. So after reading this book, do you feel you would want to go to New Orleans or do you feel you would not because of the way they've handled the whole situation? kind of wanted to go to New Orleans after reading it because I, I was there before Katrina and I don't think it's any different. It sounds like, you know, you, it's not like you go to the areas that were, I don't know, it made me want to see it again. Um, I don't know. Well, and it's the hard question. Oh, for the food. Like, you want to support people, even though tourism, yeah. you know, is their main, it, it's some, somewhat exploits the people but tourism is their main industry so if you want to support the people then tourism is not their main industry they're not like we are well it was one of the main industries well, one of their main but they've yeah. had they 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 have all kinds of offshore oil they have all kinds of things going for them hmm. tourism is important i'm not saying it's not but it's not the only thing that they do well they have college they have they have a college there. They have all sorts of things. Yeah. Hey, let's go back to talking about her as a speechwriter. I thought she had to, she was working for a man that um, just would say crazy things and then she'd have to. How unusual. And then, <laughs> do we know anybody like that? Why? Oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she only laughed. And then I'm thinking about all the um, people in the administration that they, they keep moving through um, because it's hard to do that, to justify things when you don't feel it. Like she didn't feel 
the same way. She knew he was, meh. So I thought that was really interesting. It kind of was like, whoa. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. she did mention that his public and his personal persona were two different things. Yeah, yeah. Because didn't he live in a rundown house too? Or, uh, you know, or one of the post-Katrina trailers that was kind of dingy, I thought? I thought that was mentioned. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just remember, I'm like, I don't think I like that guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but i think it does say at the end he was just disgraced mayor didn't it say or yeah I, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to google that and uh and read a little bit about that but mm -hmm. um i see if you had the book in hand instead of reading it on hoopla i know <laughs> <laughs> i That's am not a fan hard. of reading who uh, books on hoopla i have to say I like to listen to Hoopla books, but not read them. It's, it's well, not another thing that I found frustrating about it was you're at the end of a sentence and you go to the next page and you expect to start the next sentence, and that doesn't always happen. Ah, uh, you know, it's yeah. in the middle of the page, and I was like, and and it and it well, there wasn't consistency. I I just found it an interesting experience. I'm really glad that I figured out how to do it. Yeah, I'm glad that it's available because. The first availability for this book to be delivered by Amazon was May 15th. Oh no, don't buy it. So right. um, uh, we should be having, and Morgan, maybe you can share with, they're thinking about getting our curbside delivery um, set again. And they're in the talking stages, right, Morgan? So we don't really know too much. We don't know anything yet. Yeah. So, yes because the governor says that doesn't mean that it goes directly to happening. So yeah. we are yeah. a county entity and it's still in discussions. So. Yeah, like Kiwani is starting on the 24th. So there are people, um, the curbside delivery is, is happening in some communities. Uh, Maureen, down by you, curbside happening yet? There's yeah. some talk about it, um, but it, it hasn't happened yet. So, yeah. so I, and I in, in our library system here in, uh, in Cedarburg is, um, we use Libby and I checked it out. I tried to check it out in Libby and I still haven't heard back. So um, I ended up doing Kindle on this one, so. Maureen, is Libby like Hoopla? Yes, um, it is. It's, yeah. it's just, a, you know, the, the Cedarburg library um, just, just a has different a different option. system, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's it's wherever your your card is connected right. is how it yeah. operates currently. So yeah. <clears throat> I, I just downloaded on Libby the Lost Girls of Paris audio, okay. so I'll be listening to it. All right, okay. and uh, Lost Girls of Paris is an audio book with Hoopla, but it's not an ebook. Yeah, Only, oh. not the audio. Wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. What does that mean? It's an audio book with Hoopla, but it's not an ebook. That means you can't read it? You can't you read listen it. To it. You only listen to it. That's why oh. I, I'm hoping for curbside delivery. Amazon. Right. Oh, she's right. got a book. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know, I could, I could ch check it out on Audible and at least send it to one person. I've really been addicted to Audible. Um, I was like, they got, gave me an offer of like a free month or something. And then I just kept paying. It's like 15 bucks and you get. Well, you know. I got it on, um, what did I, I got it on Hoopla. I got the auditory on Hoopla. So. Oh, okay. Well, why pay for it then? Yeah. I would like to share an experience about Amazon book delivery that I think is important and was very poignant for me. Um, the other, these books didn't come right away. I belong to Prime and they should come overnight, mm -hmm. nearly a week. And I got, I ordered six books and they came in three different shipments. And the first day they came, I opened the door and was so excited to see another human being. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, and I said, thank you very much. And um, he set the books down and he said, are you gonna pick it up? And I said, well, and I, I think I'm supposed to leave it there for 24 hours. And he said, it might rain. I, <laughs> and I said, okay, so I picked it up and I stood there six feet apart from him about, and I said, thank you so much for going to work. Thank you for bringing me these books. You have no idea the joy they will bring me. And he stood there and said, lady, 
that was really nice of you to tell me that. The same man would bring me books. The first time it was two days later, and then the next day it was the next day. And he would hand me the books and go, you like books, don't you? That's cool. <laughs> Books too. And I just thought of you all the packages friend. that this man is delivering. Yeah. Remember that he's bringing me books, and everyone keeps saying that to say thank you is really important. But I, I really believe that my thank you <laughs> something to him, and it, and I, and it, it just made me feel really good. And I just wanted to tell you that. Huh. Just, it it was amazing, you know that. Because you think, I mean, I've been thinking I should put something in the mailbox for the mailman. I've been thinking, you know, I should, that you should give people things. But really, that thank you to that man, I know, meant something to him. And it just made me feel just like, wow. I just wanted to do that because it all was about books. Yeah. <laughs> well, everyone, um, is anyone interested in meeting in two weeks? I can pick another book, or are we going to give ourselves a month and read the next book? You want to give ourselves a month? I prefer to do it a month because you're not the only. You're, yeah. I, I belong to a lot of them. Yeah, I think um, so. Uh, hopefully, um, the press is. Jess, you want to say anything about um, when the press will. We don't know anything. We don't. We don't know for <laughs> sure. I mean, we're, we're following the governor's order, but you know, May twenty sixth is the working date right now. So, yeah. but we'll know more. We have a trustee meeting today, so we'll know more after that. But I have a question: What's going to happen if there are limits put on number of people that can come? Um, you don't in know. In terms of a, a Crest Pavilion capacity. Well, no, right, the last time we, the last, when we were going through this process, as I recall, first it was gatherings of 50 or less. Then it went down to gatherings of 10 or less. And what's going to happen if more than 10 people come to a book club? Um, well, right now, I've been just kind of keeping my ear to the ground on what facilities are doing, like in, like, proactive plans and one of them is is you know seat chairs six feet apart I mean we could get creative and if it's nice out we could all stand outside I mean yeah okay we don't so I'm just, yeah I'm just keeping my ear to the ground to put, I didn't mean to put pressure on you or put the cart before the horse I'm sorry oh no I'm I'm constantly thinking about it so it's no we can deal. always use the great room for the book club and that mm -hmm. would be easy to do six chairs six feet apart for everyone so um yeah that that would be no problem we can all do one gigantic circle <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as we know more we'll we'll post it in a lot of places when we know more but um hopefully we'll be face to face for our next book club and um and hopefully you'll be able to get a book if you need a book at one of the libraries so um yeah. Janine, Morgan, and Jess, thank you very much. Thank you. Done. Thanks to all you guys. Yeah. Thanks and for joining us and uh, and hope to see you in a month. And Morgan, Morgan, I hope that you'll come. I hope I know you're gonna be busy and I know you have lots of jobs, but I hope that you'll come to our book club because your insights have been great. I've really enjoyed your I've really enjoyed your addition to the to the book club. And Frank, keep coming. We need men to come. Yeah, that's another guy. <laughs> so will, will there still be a virtual option? Uh, yes, that's my question. I, I, I think so. I mean, we're, we're actually um, installing a audio feed in the Great Hall um, where okay, you can, we can plug, like, we can plug the machine right into our microphone system. So that's a possibility. But also, I mean, we had done, I mean, and Morgan has, you know, in other locations, we'd posted Facebook live videos before. It's always mm -hmm. kind of up to the presenter if they want to be, you know, but I think, I mean, we yeah, have the capability be, at the crest. We, and we, we get to Zoom in the great. Yeah. 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 So right. you can be okay. part of our book club. Hey, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 Positives <laughs> of this scenario is we're all learning new things and we can bring that forward to the future.
Yeah. For sure. And Morgan, thanks for helping us. Oh, no problem. I'm, I'm happy to help where I can. Okay. Well, thanks see you everyone all. later. Have all right. Good. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.